Dave Portnoy and his girlfriend Silvana just broke up, which took the internet world by storm. But the thing is that that's all we see. We don't know what it's like behind the scenes. With any relationship, I'm sure can attest to this. It's like it's all beautiful rainbows and like, you know, just all over the internet. And obviously behind closed doors, every relationship has its ups and downs. I think couples need to communicate that more because, you know, one person in the relationship could be thinking all these things like, oh, we're getting more serious. We've been together for all these years. They know what the end goal is. And the other person could still be on the opposite side of that, just happy and content with where they are in that in that period of time. Your heart is there. You want to be with this person. This is the person for you. But unfortunately, your life paths and where you are right now and what you see for your future isn't exactly aligned in that moment. It's not that the person wasn't meant for you. It's that person was meant for you at that period in your life. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, family? People are just breaking up. You know, things are getting weird. You but, know, like, it happens. Especially in the holiday season, weirdly. Yeah. We when were, it's supposed yeah. to be a time to come together and Jeez, stuff. This holiday season, everyone's just like, nah. Never it's mind. time to break it off. <laughs> Next holiday, you ain't going to be there. Damn, or, that's rough. Right before yeah. Christmas, before you're supposed to give gifts and New Year's and stuff, people, yeah. boyfriends are just like, it's, I think it might be time. But what Neil and I are talking about is Dave Portnoy and her, his girlfriend Silvana just broke up, which took the internet world by storm because it was something that came out of left field because a lot of people loved Dave Portnoy and Silvana together. They were just that TikTok, everyone stand them and stuff like that. I know Dave Portnoy through Barstool. He's the CEO, owner. I don't know if he, I think he sold Barstool and... Uh, owns a minority share. I don't know how he did it, but he's just a genius entrepreneur. Also does pizza reviews that I avidly watch all the time because I'm a big pizza connoisseur myself. But um, yeah, like he's this guy who um, kind of put his relationship kind of out there with his girlfriend on TikTok and they kind of blew up as that couple on TikTok, right? They'd um, be, they have a dog together. I think it might be Dave's dog and they kind of share them together or I don't, I don't know how that works, but they post like cute TikTok videos and stuff like that. And uh, everyone loved them. And out of nowhere, they talked to, she posted a TikTok basically crying and it said, when you and your boyfriend break up out of nowhere or something along the lines of that. And I was like, whoa, no way. And I read the comments and I was like, damn, that's crazy because Dave's like a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And like watching their life as a couple in the Hamptons, like going out and doing stuff, I was like, that's what's up. They're like a huge age gap difference, but like they make it work and seeing their lifestyle together and seeing the way they mesh, I was like, that's so cool to see that because a lot of those like relationship YouTube channels and stuff, they blow up and they blew up, you know? So seeing them break up, I was like, damn, that sucks. But the thing is that that's all we see. We don't know what it's like behind the scenes with any relationship. I'm sure can attest to this. It's like, it's all beautiful rainbows and like, you know, just all over the internet and obviously behind closed doors, every relationship has its ups and downs. And we don't really know the depth of why they broke up. It was asked on the BFFs podcast. He kind of like maneuvered around the question and like kept it high level. Um, but I think three years is quite some time to get in, to be involved with someone to eventually want to take things maybe to the next step. And like someone maybe just wasn't feeling ready. You know, it, it happens. We know it. Um, and, and it's not easy. And, and I like that Dave even said this. He said, no matter who breaks up with who, it's not easy like it feels regardless even if you are the one on the opposite side of it or if you're the one making that decision and that call it does suck it does suck and we've been in situations where we've made difficult decisions but because it was the right thing to do and in a weird way you kind of have to respect that too you know so it's kind of like yeah and I like the way he went about it it was like very classy he kept it high level and he said you know I have a platform and I'm speaking about it but she's not really here I can't put words in her mouth right yeah, but a lot that. of people just assumed in the comments like oh, she wanted to have a kid or they wanted to get married or she wanted to get engaged and he wasn't ready. And Dave, from what I know, he had an ex-wife um, before Silvana and uh, they're on great terms still. So a lot of people are speculating that maybe she wanted to go to that next step because after three years, I can say this from my perspective because I've gone through something very similar. When you're with a girl and they have these expectations to get engaged, have kids, get married and stuff, and you're not 
really there. Um, I myself didn't feel like I was financially capable of going to that next step. And I didn't feel really confident in myself, like as a man, to be able to sustain that sort of lifestyle that my significant other wanted at the time. So that pressure would be built up. And he spoke on this on the podcast. And he said, this is a conversation that kind of happened a few times before it was like the catalyst on Thanksgiving. Both of our parents are there. It just kind of happened organically and it went the way it went, which is probably so yeah, they broke up right in like With the family atmosphere with everyone yeah. there during the, during Thanksgiving. It's either it could have been really, really epically crazy yeah. or it was just like beautifully like neutral, neutral and they're like, yeah. all right, you guys are being adults about it because I mean, they are adults, right? Even yeah. though there's a different in age, a difference in age, but like I could, I can see how that would be a problem, right? Because I, from my POV, have dealt with that same similar issue when like, your heart is there. You want to be with this person. This is the person for you. But unfortunately, your life paths and where you are right now and what you see for your future isn't exactly aligned in that moment. That's why it's like so important to have these really difficult conversations in the beginning rather than later. But like Scary. relationships don't happen that way, Niels. Like, I don't know. I think now more than ever they do, though. They do because yeah. because we're, we live in a time where dating sucks so bad that you have to just go into it with, okay, here is my expectations. This is what I'm looking for. Is your head there or not? At least like a lot of people will agree, men and women around like, I don't, I'm not here to play games or people just don't know what they want and you come across that and people are okay with that too. But it's like, those are the people that are in that gray area of like, okay, I'm down for the relationship, but not down for anything serious, but I'm down to like have multiple dating partners. But you know, so it's like, what, what do people want? But also like you and I had this conversation when you were dropping me off to your car where like it was a similar sort of conversation that you've had with a friend, right? Mm -hmm. And they were explaining and you were kind of like taken back by it. Yeah. You're like, it was kind of like, okay, well, is this like a, you know, like in the beginning stages, it's not easy to just have a conversation. All right, what do you, where do you see yourself in a year, two years? You know what I'm saying? It's a little yeah. like much, like in the beginning, you're getting to know someone like, I You're had, going yeah, that's true. That's you know true. What I'm saying? I, I, sometimes you are taken back, but then when you kind of step back and you're like, okay, I respect that this person's honest and like mm -hmm. has an intent because I move with intent. And even if it's not the same intent, at least we know and we're clear what, what we want. And then you can, you can communicate that, you know, cause obviously I want a wife, but that's not going to happen tomorrow. It, it, it takes time to get there, but at least you know what you're working towards. And a lot of the times, even in relationships, when you're with someone for five, six, seven years, two years, three years, um, you're in that relationship, you're feeling good, the hearts are in it, but you still kind of don't know where it's going or what the goal is. And a lot of, uh, I think, couples need to communicate that more because, you know, one person in the relationship could be thinking all these things like, oh, we're getting more serious. We've been together for all these years. They know what the end goal is. And the other person could still be on the opposite side of that, just happy and content with where they are in that in that period of time. With that person who down the line you don't know might want to end up being more serious, but it's like they haven't thought that far yet, you know? So it's like you have to communicate. And those conversations are so uncomfortable. They are. And yeah. I, I, I completely understand that because like, in my situation, it was like the heart is exactly where it needs to be. And it's almost like you're f painting this false uh, image of what it could be when like years would kind of go by in the relationship and they're like, okay, this is gonna progress. Like he's gonna pop the question any minute, but in your head, you're just like, we'll figure it out down the line, right? Yeah. Because like, it's difficult for me. I can say like, it's very difficult for me to maneuver in those difficult conversations, especially dealing with breakups. Like I've been a terrible oh, yeah. person when it comes to breakups because my heart like yearns for that person because I love this person. I've grown to love who they are, their family, everything. So it's like, it's so difficult for me in the past to have like broke it off with someone that I knew was just so great, but I just wasn't where they were. So like, I had no backbone when it came to it. I would either like disregard it or just push it off or blame it on something else. So for him to like, you know, really step up, maybe he really still cared for this girl. And was oh, like, yeah. yo, I just can't 100%. give it to you. This has happened multiple times. Like now we're at a point where I can't keep dragging you along yeah. and you wait. And again, this is just speculation. We don't know the ground factor of why they broke up, but I think, um, if we do c consider a situation like this, it's important to understand like people are in our lives for a period of time, right? That may mean in a romantic relationship because you're content and like you don't realize because it's going so well that a year, two years, three years have passed with this person, especially in their case where they're now TikTok popular and they kind of are building a brand off of their, their relationship. 
time is just passing and it's getting serious. And again, one is thinking one way, the other is thinking the other. And it doesn't mean to say that that's not eventually what they can both want. It just means that they are in different places in their life. Again, generally speaking for relationships, and I know you can feel, feel for this, it's like the intent has to be clear. And I think in most relationships from what I've seen, what I'm seeing more so now, relationships leading to marriage is like there's not a lot of intention that is considered and then people are just not on the same page and it can mean like what do you mean we've been together for three years and you're like yeah we've been together for three years we're happy we're in love what what needs to change like we're, we're vibing out we're feeling each other out and then someone else is saying, we've been together for three years it's time to get married you know like what are your intentions and I'm learning more about the importance of how much that plays into a toll because then it turns into like resentment of like well, you knew I wanted this. Well, no, I didn't. We didn't communicate it. Well, you know, I don't want that. Well, you never communicated that. So, again, depending on why they broke up, I think just because he did it doesn't mean that he doesn't feel like about it, you know, or he doesn't love her less. Just because you leave someone or you end a relationship, friendship too, I, you know, like I'm dealing with things like that, does not mean that it changes the way I feel about a person unless – Feelings do change. People leave because feelings do change too or things feel forced. But for the most part, it sucks to be the one either breaking up or being broken up with. It's not easy regardless. The The absence, it's felt. It's felt and it's heavy. And someone at the end of the day just has to be the stronger person. They do. Yeah. And I, I saw this like TikTok, right? Have you ever seen those TikToks where it's like a, like a verse, right? With like this Arabic music in the background. It's like this very like really yeah. vibey, really intimate, like, a uh, beat, right? And then it's like there's a, a quote. Verse. There's a quote, I, those right? Those are all over my algorithm. All over my I algorithm, too, and I love them. I love seeing them. And there is this one quote where it said that the it's not that the person wasn't meant for you. It's that person was meant for you at that period in your life, right? And, like, I've understood this so much now, right? With even people friendships, relationships, people in the past that I've dealt with and friendships also, right? Like that person was meant to be in your life for you to grow, for you to understand, for you to um, kind of in that chapter, they needed to be there, right? Because we believe everything happens for a reason, right? Um, we believe in the big man upstairs and like we're spiritual. So we don't think things happen by coincidence. So Sometimes you can go through a bad breakup or an easy breakup, right? But that had to happen and that person had to be in that period of your life or your life could have been in a whole different direction. You could have been somewhere else. So even with Dave and Silvana, like her relationship was all over TikTok, but that made her TikTok following. And I know she probably had a following before Dave, but like she's huge now. And he talked about this. He was like, I'm, I hope she's the next Alex Earl, right? Where she blows up, she's bigger than me. Like Dave could have been a necessary and important pillar in her life at that period in her life, right? Yeah. And I'm starting to understand, like, you know when they say you're never supposed to regret something or regret someone? I don't regret anything now because it led me to this point. And there's a reason why I'm here and there's a reason why I had to let certain people go in my life or they let me go in life, right, for their growth. But that quote stuck out to me because sometimes you regret. You're like, why did I talk to that person? Why was I involved with that, right? But it's like, wow, I'm starting to understand, like, they were they were right for me in yeah. that moment. Yes, that. And even if they weren't right for you, it was still a learning experience because there are people who were in moments of our life at one point who also shouldn't have been, let's be honest. But at the same time, I've always taken away just like learning curves from those situations on myself. Like, why did I behave that way? Why did I uh, take things the way that I did? How did I allow certain things? You know, how did I step out of my comfort zone? Like, why, right? Just signaling the why aspect of like my behaviors. And that's all growth and like learning mechanisms, which is also so grateful to have even in a experience you learn so much about yourself and then the next experience is just something that you're so much more woke on you know and so much more alert f again from your own point of view for yourself and doesn't mean that you know the relationships happen for a reason and then we're better than like you have great relationships too that happen for a reason and then unfortunately don't work out but it's like it's all to eventually get you to where you're supposed to be down the line with or without that person in your life. And, and it's, it's hard to think about in that moment, but then you eventually do start to see clearly. And when you do it, it's really beautiful because you're like, ah, oh, makes sense, right? And it takes time. It could take a year. It could take 10 years. It doesn't even matter. You can never let it go. Honestly, you can move on and still not, never let it go. And that's fine too. But it's also a matter of like doing what's best. I think as human beings, the hardest thing is doing what's best for ourselves sometimes. It is because it hurts and it sucks. And it's like, but the reality is that 
you'll kind of know when you've had enough and you get to a place where you're understanding things from a different lens and you're just, again, and I spoke to one of uh, someone not too long ago and they mentioned something about like things feeling forced even. And it's like, you, you want to avoid getting to that state because then it just turns into just unrecognizing yourself and like, even in, in Dave's situation again, like, and I thought about, you know, she had to go release a video crying and saying she broke up with her boyfriend. Like, in the public eye, it's so much harder. I think about celebrities all the time who, like, are married and go through divorces and everyone's just waiting for them to speak on it. Say something, say something. We're waiting for any little clue or they they kind of, again, maneuver around it, keep a high level. And that's hard, too, because it's like you have to go face the world now and be like, yeah, you know, your favorite couple just broke up and now I got to deal with it, but I'm also going through what I'm going through. But I have to deal with the media. Like, it's a lot. And that can also skew the way you think, right? Yeah. Because like you're seeing a bunch of people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds yes. of strangers just like r giving you feedback that they have no idea no what idea. happened in your relationship, right? But they're like, F him, move on. But he could have been a great guy or vice versa, right? Like, And like we don't even know if up. he wanted to talk about it, That's but he I'm probably saying. had to, you know, yeah, on his like platform. You messed up and like whatever. And you're seeing this constant feedback and you're just like, that can make you think, right? So don't. Don't laugh. Nobody laugh at me, right? But I used to watch this show called The Vampire Diaries, right? And I loved that show. That was my show, right? And uh, there was this moment in the show where they were able to essentially turn off their emotions, right? So, like, there was no emotion at all. They didn't feel hurt. They didn't feel anger. Like, she did it on purpose. I think Elena at the time or the, one of the vampires or whatever, like, turned it off because they were going through so much hurt at the time about losing this person that they just... Turn, it was called like turning your humanity off, right? Where you have zero emotions. And in this moment of like heightened emotion, right? When you're going through a breakup, right? Your mind is going through hell, right? You're going through the waves of like grief of losing someone, the sadness, the regret, right? I would like, okay, would you ever do that? Like in a moment where you're going through severe guilt, severe mm -hmm. anger, severe, would you be able to just, if you had a decision to be like, let me just turn this off. But then again, you're a shell of yourself. Like nothing, you don't get happy. You don't get sad. You don't, would you do it? I don't know. I, in a mo uh, for certain moments, maybe. Or is it necessary to get over that or go through no, the no, hurt? No, no, you have to. to you go, have to. Right? You have to Instead go of, it. Because people do that. They turn their humanity off by like doing drugs, like yeah, drinking masking. their pain. Masking. That's why I'm asking this question. Well, that's all uh, just avoiding dismissive, um, you know, trauma. Like, for me, getting I, in a new relationship. Yeah, like again, just not processing, and then they bleed that into the next relationship, and then you just create this monster or like the drugs or whatever. And I get it; people have different coping mechanisms. But for me, my highest points always came from like my rock bottoms. So when I hit that rock bottom of like deep, heartbroken, low emotion, like shattered, ripped apart. And I get past that point, oh my God, I'm like flying. I'm like, un I'm like, can nothing touch me? I went through hell. I now know what that feels like and I'll do everything to not get there again. And if I do, I'll know how to handle it. And then also like when I'm sad, I'm sad and I let myself be sad. And then I'm like, okay, I'm good now. I can, and I, you know, it's wild. I, a long time ago on our podcast before I went through what I went through, um, I would always talk about, I'm so good at just turning it on and off. Like, I, Mila, don't feel that way, move on. And then I got to a point where, oh, my God, I had no control. Like, I was like, wait, spoke too soon. Like, my feelings were in full control of how I felt. And then I got to a point where I let myself go through it. Went to, you got to go through the healing process, bro. There's a whole process. And for people, that looks different. Months, years, two days, three days, drugs, moving on, hooking up. It's different to everybody, but it, there is a healing journey and you have to let yourself go through each stage. And those stages look very different. And I think once you get to that peak of like where you're in control again, it's a beautiful feeling. And it doesn't have to be like your highest, like, you know, cause like when as human beings, when we are in a really dark place and then we get a, a taste of dopamine and we get really, really, really high up and then something happens and we come crashing down, coming, climbing back out of that is even harder. So you got to let yourself like process and go through it, go through the pains, go through the days of just in bed crying, go through the days of eating, like, go through the days of going out, getting messed up with friends and like doing, you know, being degenerate, literally like you have to like let it happen until you get back to yourself. And that's fine. It's part of the process. I think it is a part of the process. Neil, and I, maybe in a weird way, that's just how they turn it on and off. I don't know. I mean, reality is we can never turn off our emotions. I wish. You know, yeah. I wish for like a day I could be like, okay, today I don't, I don't have that energy. So I've turned it all off. But because it, even feeling happy is exhausting, right? Yeah. I like mean, feelings are exhausting. 
Definitely. And I think it's better to face them. Yeah. And then get being able to get over them instead of like masking and just like, uh, you know, forcing and shunning it away. Because once you face the monster, you're able to probably your odds of conquering that demon is much higher. And talking about it. I, I said this earlier about Dave. He probably didn't want to talk about it. But then again, maybe this is helpful for him and a source of like coping because telling his audience his platform, hearing the feedback and hearing the yeah, it's OK. You made the d good decision. We respect you. We know it's hard does help. You know, so talking about it really helps, too. I agree, Niels. And where can they find us? YouTube.com slash Sedema Podcast, TDP. We out. We out.